Officially, hello everyone and welcome to It's All Writing Club setting and description. My name is Erin dagger Mangin. I am a programming coordinator here at Loudoun County Public Library. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Nathan Leslie, who is a uh, published author and a teacher at, or te professor, sorry, professor at uh, Nova Community College. Um, and before I pass it on, I just wanted to mention that our It's All Right short story contest is going on right now. So if you haven't submitted your short stories already, make sure you get it in by March 1st. Um, we're having an editing workshop on the 24th of this month. So if you would like piece A, I think it's the first 250 words of your short story looked at and reviewed by a published author. Uh, make sure you get that in. You can find it on our calendar. It's library.loudon.gov slash calendar. Uh, you can also view all of our other previous It's Our Writing Club videos on our YouTube channel. There is a link in the chat. And on that note, I'm gonna hand it over to Nathan. Thanks, Aaron. Can you all hear me okay? Okay, good, good, good. So um, since we have uh, three participants today, I thought maybe we'd do brief introductions. ER, welcome back. You've um, attended some of my sessions before. And Cheryl, I think you've attended one of mine before. Um, Chris Dith, I'm not sure if you have or not, but um, but let's just kind of do brief introductions. Um, I'll start. So um, yeah, uh, as Aaron mentioned, um, I teach at Nova in Sterling at the Loudoun campus. If you're ever interested in taking a class there, um, that's where you can find me. And um, yeah, I've written a number of books of fiction, poetry. I'm the editor of um, Best Small Fictions, which is a anthology. And I also edit the Maryland Literary Review, which is online. So you can check all those things out. Um, let's hear from Cheryl. Um, Cheryl, uh, welcome. There. Um, I'm a novice, complete novice uh, of writing, just interested in trying to start with short stories. I attended your uh, flash fiction a couple weeks ago, and I think that's what I kind of would like to do is the shorter uh, stories. So, Okay, me. great. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Um, Krista, um, do you have a mic? Or, or if not, you can just type something up in chat. Novel. A little louder, please. I can't hear you. Oh, no. Just, I can barely hear you. You want to write a graphic novel? And that's about all I heard. Okay. All right. That's good. And ER, um, why don't you introduce yourself to people, please? <laughs> okay, great. Aspiring writer, in case you didn't see it in, in chat, I'll just read uh, read it. Aspiring writer, but really can't get past the exploratory phase, so a lot of preambles. I live in Leesburg. Yeah, okay, so welcome, everyone. Um, I like this, by the way. Um, uh, Aaron mentioned the, the free editing uh, session. I'm not doing that one, but that sounds really great. So um, maybe what we can do is, you know, do a little writing today, and then you can take it to the editing, uh, the free editing service. I mean, that sounds like a great deal. Um, all right, so today we're going to talk about setting and description. I'm just going to type that up in uh, chat so we can all kind of visualize it and see it. So um, these are obviously really key aspects of uh, creative writing and uh, of fiction in particular. And I'm, I'm just going to kind of say a few words about about each and, and share some examples. And um, and then we're going to do some exercises. So basically, the way I like to run these sessions is, you know, make them active. So you all aren't just kind of listening to me, you know, lecture for an hour. Um, it'll be a little bit of sort of, a, I guess, lecture and, and discussion, some sharing, some brainstorming, and also a lot of um, writing and sharing of exercises. So I have three little exercises I thought we would try depending on how much time we have. So setting and description, um, first of all, let's kind of define our 
terms, or at least the way I'm kind of using them. So setting refers to uh, the place and time of your story or your novel or your flash fiction or your graphic novel. So just to type that up, place and time. And, and the time is key too. People sometimes forget about that um, because, you know, obviously if you set your, uh, your story, for example, in let's say, you know, Boston, Massachusetts today, it's going to look a lot different than if, if it was Boston, Massachusetts in 1686, right? So you have to, um, of course, think about that or be cognizant of the time as well when you're writing. And sometimes um, you don't necessarily state that outright, uh, but perhaps you um, imply it or you invoke a certain time as you're writing. Um, of course, many of us write in the sort of the present tense and, or sorry, about the present day. Um, and in that case, it's it's contemporary fiction. But if you're writing a historical fiction piece, that time element is, is really key. Um, so obviously the place itself is, um, the physical surroundings, and you can think macro or you can think micro on this. You can think about sort of the the big picture, um, the landscape, the city, the town, the you know the surroundings, or you can think just about sort of where your character is located physically um, in that particular place, their their house, their you know their car, their job, workplace, and so forth. So both of those things are really important. So um, with setting, it's, there's a lot of sort of nuance with, with setting, and there's also a couple of different philosophies. So for example, um, with setting, some, there, the two extreme philosophies would be one, sort of the, um, I guess, you know, expansionist or maximalist idea. Uh, and what that means is um, some people believe that setting should be um, very present in, in your story and um, and you should detail everything as you go, right? That's in many ways, I guess that's sort of like the Henry James approach, um, where you're just really detailing everything and describing everything. And that's one philosophy on the other extreme. There are writers who really just say a couple, couple of, you know, maybe key insights regarding the setting, um, and, and sort of let it go from there. Um, so those are the extremes. Personally, I think it's it's nice if setting is a presence. Um, so let's talk about that. Whether it's it's very simplistic or whether it's really detailed, if setting is a presence in your story or your novel or your graphic novel, um, it really helps uh, sort of the texture and the and the um, nuance that you bring that you bring to your fiction and what the readers um, get out of it. So what I mean by that is, um, in, a, in a sense, setting can be another character in your, um, in your work. Um, so in other words, if your setting is, is specific enough and tangible enough, that setting itself can be sort of a, um, another you know, presence to use the, the same word again, um, that, that really just lingers and, um, and resonates throughout the story. Okay. Now this, again, this could be landscape. This could be sort of the details of the, um, the surroundings, um, whether it's a, a flat terrain, a hilly terrain, or, you know, the town, the city, the sort of the big picture, or again, the small picture. So now uh, let's talk a, a, about some, uh, some kind of details within that. So, um, one thing that a lot of writers forget about sometimes is when to incorporate setting. So we all know that setting should be, um, uh, you know, should have an appearance in, in your work, but when do you incorporate it? And uh, sometimes it's best to really just establish your setting early on in a story or early on in a novel. Let's just type that up. Um, and I, and the reason this is effective is it, it grounds your reader, right? It, um, it gives your readers a, a sense of where this is taking place. And then the reader can sort of use his or her imagination from there. And then the setting becomes more of a presence. So for instance, let's say your, your story or your novel is, is set um, in a winter landscape like today, um, and maybe it's cold or maybe it's snowing. If that snow is a constantly a presence um, in, your, in your story or your novel, 
then um, your reader is going to really feel that. It's going to feel cold. It's going to be very sensory and, again, a presence throughout your piece. So let me share a few examples um, of what I mean. And these are kind of famous examples, I would say, or uh, famous-ish examples of authors who use a lot of setting. Um, so probably the most famous uh, you know, writer who uses setting or used setting in his work is, is William Faulkner here. Uh, this is a little, this is a really old beat up copy of As I Lay Dying. <clears throat> and of course, uh, William Faulkner is famous for setting because all of his work was set in Yoknipatapa County, hard to say, um, Mississippi, uh, which the famously was called his little postage stamp of earth. And what that means is um, it was a fictional uh, county based on Oxford County in Mississippi. And um, what Faulkner did was he set, you know, the majority of his work, at least in Yoakum Patel County. And anyone who was reading a Faulkner uh, story or novel already, you know, assumed, oh, well, this is, this is set in his county. Um, it's actually based on, you know, um, places he knew very well growing up and living in Mississippi. But this is one of the, the sort of the main um, selling points of Faulkner's work is that it was kind of a very regionally based, very, um, very established and, and uh, specific in its presence. So the very beginning of As I Lay Dying, I'm just going to read a couple of paragraphs, um, kind of defines it and, and it establishes this very rural um, southern, deep south kind of setting. Um, so I'll just read a few um, sentences here. Jewel and I come up from the field following the path in single file. Although I'm 15 ahead of him, anyone watching us from the cotton house can see Jewel's frayed and broken straw hat a full head above my own. The path runs straight as a plumb line, worn smooth by feet and baked brick hard by July between the green rows of laid by cotton to the cotton house in the center of the field where it turns and circles the cotton house at four soft right angles and goes on across the field again, worn so by feet in fading precision. The cotton house is of rough logs from between which the chinking has long fallen, square with a broken roof set at a single, pat, single pitch. It leans in empty and shimmering dilapidation in the sunlight. A single broad window and two opposite walls giving on to the approaches of the path. When we reach it, I turn and follow the path which circles the house. So, you know, just these, these details, very specific details of the cotton house, the path, and um, the cotton fields, and just, you know, you really can picture it. And this is just the very beginning of the, of the novel. So I really think that's a good example of, um, of a novel that uses this. And I'll type it up in chat in case you don't know this. It's a brilliant novel um, and also great to talk about regarding point of view as a side note. <clears throat> okay. Um, another example, excuse me, as I reach behind me, by the way, this is my yellow brick road. This is our journey we're taking, I guess. Um, another example is Willa Cather's Death Comes for the Archbishop, okay, which is another great novel, um, you know, always sort of on the, uh, the list of one of the best novels, um, American novels of the 20th century. And this one is set in a very different, um, setting it's it's actually set in new mexico in um sort of the desert mountainous desert area and this is from early on in the novel it's not the very first um uh, page but it is from the first chapter and willa cather um i'm sure she knew new mexico well because she she really paints a vivid picture here um, and it's about these these missionaries and in, in new mexico so just a couple sentences from this novel there are no wagon roads, no canals, no navigable rivers. Trade is carried on by means of pack mules over treacherous trails. The desert down there has a peculiar horror. I do not mean thirst nor Indian massacres, which are frequent. Their very floor of the, of the world is cracked open into countless canyons and arroyos, fissures in the earth, 
which are sometimes 10 feet deep, sometimes a thousand. Up and down these stony chasms, the traveler and his mules clamber as best they can. And it, it continues on from there. But I love these details here uh, about the, the canyons, the auroros, the dryness, the, uh, the mules, um, and the, the lack of rivers, right? It's a very dry uh, area. And if you've been to New Mexico, you can probably picture what she's, what she's talking about there. And this is Willa Cather. Just to put it in chat there. Okay, and one last example, another kind of author who uh, very famously used a lot of setting in all of his uh, novels is uh, is uh, Charles Dickens, of course. I don't know if you can see this, but this is Oliver Twist. <clears throat> And uh, for him, it was off in London, right? In London, England. And he really depicts the, the poverty and the class sort of um, differences in, in London. And uh, of course, Victorian, you know, before cars and before electricity. Um, so here's just a little paragraph from um, chapter 15 of Oliver Twist. And of course, Oliver Twist deals a lot with um, with poverty as well, um, which was was a big kind of um, feature of Charles Dickens's work. So here's the beginning of chapter 15. Um, in the obscure parlor of a low public house in the filthiest part of Little Saffron, sorry, <coughs> Little Saffron Hill, a dark and gloomy den where a flaring gaslight burned all day in the winter time, and where no ray of sun ever shone in the summer. There sat brooding over a little pewter measure and a small glass, strongly impregnated with the smell of liquor, a man in a velveteen coat, drab shorts, half boots and stockings, whom even by that dim light, no experienced agent of police would have hesitated to recognize as Mr. William Sykes. As his feet sat, sorry, at his feet sat a white coated, red-eyed dog who occupied himself alternately in winking at his master with both eyes at the same time and in licking a large, fresh cut on one side of his mouth, <coughs> which appeared to be the result of some recent conflict. So I love the, the details here of, um, especially the one that stands out to me is the gaslight and how it's kind of burning all day. And of course, now we have, we have, um, electric light, but back then gas light, and you can almost picture what that would, um, what that would look like and maybe smell like as well. So those are a few examples of, um, of setting. Um, now, before we move on to just a few words about description, do you all have any particular novels or short stories that you think of when, when you, uh, think of, you know, the idea of setting, feel free to, um, shout them out or, or just type them up in chat. I stumped you all. Okay, well, if you do think of something, please let me know. Oh, Michael Crichton, okay. Juno Diaz, yeah, I like that. Yeah, Juno Diaz has a great sense of place in his work. The Outlander novel, I don't know that one. Um, but Cheryl, what, um, what, what strikes you about that one in terms of setting? I'll just chime in here. It's a, it's a bunch of novels and, uh, they go back in time and then, uh, comes back. I think it's Scottish, mm. um, in, yeah. Okay. Very good. Anyway. Amulet. And who wrote that? Krista, do you, do you remember? Think about it. 
Okay, so that's setting. That's my that's sort of my presentation on setting. Um, let's talk a little bit about description and make a distinction between setting and description. So um, description. Now, by description, I mean about anything, not just setting. So that's the main distinction. Um, setting is really the place, the time, the you know the physical surroundings, details, the interior and exterior. But um, in terms of description, what I mean is the physical description of maybe the the characters, um, you know, the possessions, just anything else that's not setting. So it's kind of a similar concept, but um, a little bit different in, in the sense that now we're talking about potentially people. And actually, we got a good a good little um, sense of it in the 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 Dickens passage I read, where he um, describes the man and what the man is wearing, uh, and his name is Mr. William Sykes. And then we have a description of the dog. So by description, I mean, you know, just simply again, um, characters and um, things as well that aren't necessarily um, part of the setting exactly, but are, are maybe people that move through them. Okay, so um, why, why is setting important? Uh, sorry, why is description important? Because of course you wanna describe your characters, you wanna describe you know, everything in your, in your universe that you're writing about, um, not just the setting, right? If you just describe the setting, but don't describe the people, that's gonna seem a little odd. Okay, so let's try some writing. And the way I like to do this is um, feel free to write on, you know, a piece of paper or on a on your computer. But ultimately, um, if you can either share, uh, if some if someone or maybe more than one person <clears throat> can can share um, what they wrote afterwards, uh, that would be great. Um, you can type in the, in the chat if you like. Um, I mean, pay, copy and paste it in the chat or or read it out loud. So I have three different uh, exercises to practice these ideas, and, and we'll talk about uh, talk about these. Uh, before we do that, uh, ER has a question. So setting is more of a fact-based scene out of Year Avenue and so forth. Um, if I understand your correct uh, your your question correctly, um, I don't know about fact-based because okay, so <clears throat> your setting is your own invention, right? Um, it can be based on fact, but you can, of course, diverge from it, just like Faulkner did. I mean, Yoakum Patepa County was not a real place. He imagined it, but it was based on something he knew. The other way to, uh, the other way to go about it is um, to write about a real place and write about real things that you see or know about. Um, that's also very effective because then people can go there, you know, and in fact, they're, they're um, probably know about uh, tourist sort of tourist traps, you know, where um, tour companies will will take uh, you know readers, fans of a, a give of a given author, let's say James Joyce in uh, Ireland, and um, take them around to to places that he wrote about in in Ulysses, for example. So, yeah, that's the other way to, to do it is to to write about real places, and you know, really try to capture it. But you can also do diverge from that and use your own imagination as well. It's a great question. Okay, so let's work with setting first. Um, and what I want you to do here is, before we get started, kind of think of a, a story that you can work with here. Maybe something you have been working with <clears throat> or something that um, is in the back of your mind and you would like to work with it or write it, but you haven't yet, all right? So let's imagine kind of the, um, the big picture setting first, all right? And let me just type up the exercise here in the chat, which is this. Uh, Okay, so we're going to work with kind of like the big picture first. So describe an imaginary or fictional location, the town, the landscape, the buildings. Uh, think of the Willa Cather passage about the desert and how she characterizes the, the canyons and the dryness and the mountains and like that, right? So um, imagine this fictional 
story you're writing um, and uh, try to capture sort of like the big picture um, in just about a paragraph or so. All right, I'll give you about 10 minutes and then uh, we'll come back and hear what you come up with. Make sense? Okay, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and stop you on this, um, this, this little setting exercise and let's see if we can share a little bit. Um, welcome, by the way, to GG and VA or Virginia. <laughs> I'm not sure who, who you are, but welcome. Um, okay, so who would like to, uh, to share a little bit of uh, a setting detail and what you came up with? Great, in chat, ER, let's see, scrolling up a little bit. Okay, um, ER, is your, uh, is your microphone working? Would you like to read this? taking the silence as a no. So I'll just go ahead and read um, a little bit, maybe the first part. Um, so ER writes, space was dark and beautiful with only the stars really to give you any light. And the reflection off the planet below possessed one seamless thought. There was something in the immediate darkness. The temperature in the suit dropped relatively quick as the systems died down and I could only hear nothing in the silence. Ever had I dreamed of being so far from home, yet now I was out there. I wanted to be planet bound more than any soldier with starry eyed dreams for the cosmos withheld us, withheld from us originally from Earth, and everything kept spinning so that the stars I could only glimpse in a smatter of lines going by and that crazy lilt of the planet glared back every revolution with the nearest star's light bouncing off. Okay, I'll stop there. So, um, ER, that's great. So we really get a nice sense of, at least for me, the way I read this, sort of the, um, the coldness, the loneliness of space, and um, yeah, the, the sort of emptiness of, of it as well. Um, the silence, being far from home, sort of feelings of loneliness comes through the setting. And so, yeah, that's, that's a good example. Setting can really invoke a lot. It can invoke a lot of feeling and can convey the readers, sorry, convey the, the character's um, emotional state or mental state as well. So setting can kind of reflect what, what you're trying to do with characterization as well. All right, um, anyone else wanna share? Okay, maybe not. So hopefully this was effective uh, for you and, and you know generated some good setting details. Um, it's really important, let me just say a couple more words about setting before we move on to a couple more exercises. So setting um, is especially important in longer works, right? Novels, graphic novels, even a long short story, um, because you know there you're expected to kind of gain a lot of um, material about this this world you're creating. In a shorter story, flash fiction especially, it's maybe not quite as important because you just simply don't have the space. Um, but still important, but maybe not quite as vital. Okay, let's move on to a very quick exercise. Now we're gonna hone in on um, not the sort of the big picture um, town, city, landscape details, but now we're gonna focus on where your character um, lives in particular. Let me type up this exercise. So this one will only take about two minutes, maybe three minutes. Okay, here we go. Describe Okay, so the directions are to describe 
your character's favorite room in their house. Okay. And so what I mean is, you know, imagine your character lives in a house. First of all, that's not, not to assume anything. Um, your character can live anywhere. Um, uh, but let's imagine a house and in that house, where does your character like to like to be? Um, and I only want you to give it this three sentences because short setting details are also effective. You don't need long, you know, cumbersome paragraphs to set everything up. Sometimes you can just include a, a brief little snippet, just a few sentences and sketch out something important about the setting. Okay. So I'm only going to give you about three minutes on this one. Um, three sentences and three men in three minutes about your character's favorite room in their house. Okay, guys, so let's come on back. Um, so external setting is really important, of course, but internal setting is also important because what's in someone's room, house, you know, that also gives you a sense of what your character is buying and, you know, how they kind of conceive of themselves. And um, it tells us about their personality. It tells us about uh, who, um, sort of who they are and what they like to do and what they like to surround themselves uh, with and by and interests and hobbies and so much, right? So uh, this is a really good exercise, I think. So let's see, uh, Cheryl typed in a... Uh, let's get to Cheryl's. ER also um, posted on chat. Um, but let's take a look at Cheryl's, which re uh, Cheryl, would you like me to read it or do you, would you care to read it? Uh, go ahead. You can read it. <laughs> okay. And then also Christoph. Okay. We'll get to these two. So again, this is three sentences and I like this because it's, um, it's, it's a very practical little exercise, something you can incorporate into, into a piece you're working on or, you know, you don't have to spend so many sentences and paragraphs establishing setting always. So uh, Cheryl writes, the sunlight streams through the sli sliding glass doors onto the kitchen table. Uh, the plants stretch toward the light. A pot of Sunday sauce is bubbling on the stove and filling the air with a mixture of basil, garlic, and tomatoes. Excellent. That's a very pleasant description um, as well. And it gives us a, a, a sense of this character's interests. Um, the the plants, right? So this character likes to embrace life and surround herself or himself with um, with plants. And then also this uh, great last sentence with all the details about, um, I'm assuming, a spaghetti sauce um, and food and has a real warm quality to it. So not only does the setting incorporate things, but it also uh, incorporates food in this case. Great job. Uh, Christoph writes, uh, our basement was filled with luminous plants and computers. The sweet smell of the flower brought me instant hope. It was the only memory of our home. Okay, so this one has a nice nostalgic feel to it because it's reflecting back to something. Um, and I especially like that second sentence of the sweet smell, the flower brought me instant hope. Um, we could even add to that about what kind of flower, you know, the, here's the, where the senses come in. Um, what particular kind of flower might, might be uh, resonating there. Okay, great. So one last exercise. And, um, we're going to kind of shift gears a little bit to description now of not just setting um, sort of exterior things pl place, but actually your character, him or herself. So here's the, uh, this one is, is very cut and dry, very simple. Um, just type it up into chat. Oops. Okay, and for this one, um, I'll make it five minutes. All right, so describe your character physically, their face, their body, what they wear, anything. So here the, the key is to focus on now, not just the setting, but the person that you're writing about, the character you're writing about. Um, in particular, I, th I think the face is always important. 
but um, you can also detail um, information uh, about how old they are or what have you, you know, run with it. All right, five minutes and we'll come back. Wind down here. Um, I hope you all got something out of this little workshop on setting and description. Um, as you continue to work on your fiction, you know, just keep some of these things in mind and uh, continue to incorporate setting and description because they're really helpful, really allows your reader to um, to picture and visualize where your fiction, where your story is taking place um, and who's in it, who's, you know, in the case of description, uh, who the story, who the novel is about. So these are great tools in your in your toolbox. And um, thank you all for coming and for tuning in and for writing, um, you know, for working on these exercises and writing good stuff. And I hope to see you in one of my future workshops. Take care, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. And remember, this video will be posted online. And please submit your short stories. Have a good night. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks, Aaron. See you next time.